Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. If you're a regular on Debbie's Back Porch, you may have noticed that I haven't been posting a whole lot lately. And my excuse for that is because I have been gardening. Because, you know, that's what old retired ladies do. The garden that my husband and I had kept for many years got a little bit too big for me. And so I built this smaller garden, downsized a bit. And yes, I did almost all of it by myself. I had some help with the lifting and carrying. And the teenage boy next door helped me with some of the beds. So this morning I needed to pick some beans. And I thought while I was in the garden, I would share a little bit with you about pollination in general and squash in particular. As always, if you like our videos, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and if you click the little bell icon at the top right you can get notifications when I post new videos. Now filming in my garden is very hard because it's very sunny so I'm going to rely a lot on photos I took when the sun wasn't so bright. And I'll start with this one. This is a male squash blossom. This blossom will never make a squash. Its purpose is to attract pollinators and to pollinate the female blossom. You can see that it grows directly out of a stem. It has about a day to get that done and then it will just fall off. This is a female squash blossom that hasn't yet opened. You can see the little fruit like thing in the back. It looks like a baby squash but it really isn't. This is the blossom. If, the, if it doesn't get pollinated Pretty quickly, once it's opened, this little squash-like thing will just fall off. Then folks get scared and think there's something wrong with their plant, but there isn't. There's something wrong with the pollination. Now most gardens actually have pollinators even if you don't think of them as such. Honeybees are not the only pollinators. All kinds of bees, wasp, even flies and ants are pollinators. And you can be a pollinator too. And I'm going to show you how. I have picked this male blossom. You can see the stamen in there. There is pollen on it. Then I'm going to find some female blossoms that are opened. And you need to do this in the morning, by the way. They close in the afternoon. And I'm just going to pull back the leaves. And I'm going to expose the female blossom to the pollen in the male blossom. You can do this by brushing it with a q-tip or brushing it with a little tiny paintbrush or you could even do it with just your finger. And, and by the way I'm not wearing gloves because this is a sterile procedure. I do it to keep the dirt out of my fingernails. So one male blossom can pollinate several female blossoms but you just rub the stamen down inside the female blossom and then it will be pollinated. Now of course if you have plenty of pollinators out in your garden you don't really have to do this. I'm doing it because I'm, I want to have a couple to save as seed and I want them to go ahead and start growing so I can bag them so they don't get pollinated by a different kind of squash. Quick note about that and I'll do more in another video. Your squash are not going to cross with other varieties of melons and most winter squash. I'll give you the details, but even if they did cross pollinate, they wouldn't make a monster squash. Uh, that just doesn't happen. It's generally some poor pollination that causes that. So if you're planting two different kinds of, say, summer squash, and I have some zucchini planted too, um, those can cross-pollinate and they can cross-pollinate for a long distance, uh, close to half a mile. So if you want to save seeds, which is what I want to do with these, you may want to take steps to ensure they don't cross. Now these are beans and beans are different. Beans have what's called a perfect bloom, meaning it has both male and female inside it just like tomato blooms are perfect blooms. They do cross-pollinate, but not as easily. 
and just like squash, if they cross-pollinate, it doesn't affect this year's fruit. It only affects the seeds. Peppers and eggplants are the same. They have perfect blooms. So the old wives' tale you've heard about three lobes on a pepper is female and four lobes is male or something like that. That's all an old wives' tale. It's not true. Each bloom is perfect. It has both male and female in it. Now, although these blooms are perfect, when the temperatures get hot, like above 85 and stay there, the pollen gets sticky, so you may want to give them a shake or use a little paintbrush or Q-tip to finish pollination. Otherwise, they won't set fruit in the heat. And this is my baby corn. And you can see I've built a grid up here just to give them a little extra support from the wind because I've had a problem with them falling over in the wind. Corn is different. It makes a tassel and silks, and each silk is for pollination of a kernel. The wind will blow the pollen loose, and it'll fall down and pollinate the silks and therefore create um, an ear of corn. When you have an ear of corn that has lots of different, lots of empty spots, then it means it wasn't pollinated properly. Corn cross pollinates easily over a long distance and it will impact this year's crop. These are my rattlesnake beans and they're my very favorite green bean to grow. They're very prolific. They take almost no care and they have a characteristic that makes them my favorite. They have purple stripes and that makes them easy to find. The purple stripes make them stand out from the leaves so picking goes much easier. These are cranberry beans or borlodi beans. I let them grow until the beans are developed and eat them as fresh. And then the last ones I'll just leave on the vine to dry. Those will be either seeds or I will store them and use them as dried beans just like you buy from the grocery store. These are onions that I'm growing in containers. And these are purple hull peas and they are not blooming yet. Just like beans, they have a perfect bloom. And this is the results. These are fresh Italian green beans that I'm cooking for dinner. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. And I hope to see you again tomorrow.